hope you're hungry because you're listening to Everybody Eats. Welcome back. Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of the Everybody Eats podcast. It's your host, Ben Belazare. And Nito. So today we have a really special guest with us today, Ms. Jeunesse Corchado. Thank you very much for joining us on today's episode. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for having me. I love this. And I love that you said my name so well. I like it. I you should, <laughs> from now on, you have that You have that title, okay? You're hey, going to be the person in charge of telling my name. <laughs> let's do it. For sure. Like I said, like us unique names, we got to stick together. Everyone, like people mess up Ben's key all the time. So, you know, I got to make sure. Got to make sure. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so before we start some housekeeper items, make sure you're following us on all platforms, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you listen to podcasts, make sure you're tuning in on Instagram, everybodyeats.pod. So make sure you follow us. That's where we'll have all the snippets. And on Twitter, you can follow us on EBE Pod on Twitter. Make sure you're following great content. Oh, and make sure you like, subscribe, and share our YouTube channel, Everybody Eats. Yes. And, and a big shout out to LS Cream for uh for that crema. So last episode, we had LS Cream Liqueur. Um, mm. They impressed us with their Haitian crema. So of course, you know. Oh, que rico. That's yeah, awesome. Exactly. <laughs> Definitely. So shout outs to them. We appreciate the love and support um, from those guys. So let's get into today's episode. So yeah, um, yes. if you could describe, just start with your intro background. We, we, who are you? Where are you from? What do you do? And then we'll get the conversation going. Well, um, my name is Jeunesse Porchado. It comes from Jeanette and Ernesto. My mom is a, we're, we're, we're Puerto Ricans and that's a big thing in Puerto Rican culture. We mix our names. Um, and so uh, I'm from Puerto Rico. I was born and raised here. I'm actually here right now. Currently I'm in the island and I've been wanting to be an actress since I was born. All my life, I wanted to be an actress. I would always say, I'm going to be an actress in Hollywood. I'm going to be an athlete. So that was always the thing that I said. I was like, I was going to be an actress in Hollywood. And then I would take acting classes. And then one time, you know, did you guys ever watch Zach and Cody? Yeah. Okay. So Esteban Ramirez Montoya, you know, that guy. Esteban Ramirez, the guy with the, with the yeah. chicken. <laughs> yeah. So... He came with a celebrity actress camp look at that time. Uh, it was called celebrity actress camp. Now it's called CGTV. And he came to basically scout children that were talented, that he could teach and hopefully um, allow them to dream big and connect them with managers and agents. And that was a one time thing. He came to Puerto Rico and was looking for kids. And I, that's a, a long, like a really long story, but to make it short, I basically went to the audition. I saw Mr. Mosby. I hope that you remember who Mr. Yeah. Mosby was. So when I saw Mr. Mosby, I was like, oh, this is real. Like Mr. Mosby is right here in front of me. <laughs> and I immediately was like, oh my God, this could actually happen. Like my dreams could actually happen. Cause this man is someone that I was seeing on TV here in the Island. And so I auditioned for him. And I remember that day I did, a, we, they were giving us these commercial things. And I remember I did this like cola, whatever it was like a Pepsi or something, whatever it was like a, like a commercial. And before I left the room, like I did it and I was like, okay, that's cool. Like whatever he could really see from a commercial. I didn't feel like it would, it would actually portray or show my talent that much. And I remember telling him, can I improv for you? And I improved. I did this whole like monologue that my mom had just died in a car accident. And he was so in shock. And he was like, thank you so much. Like he, he loved it. A day passed and he calls, not him, but like the, the company calls and says, we want you, we want to, to teach you and we want you to be a part of this. And that's when my journey really started. The Hollywood journey started that moment. I think that's, that was the shift from going and doing auditions here in Puerto Rico and doing content here in Puerto Rico to actually saying, okay, I'm, this is possible. I'm going to, I'm going to go to Hollywood one day. And, and after that, uh, I kept, I kept being in contact with Adrian. That's the name of Esteban, the guy. Um, he's the, basically the, the, the creator of this camp. And he told me you should come to the, to the summer camp here in LA. And I did. 
and I was 15 and I met a bunch of managers and agents that time. And then the rest is history. I was like, okay, I'm going to come. And, and what about that? I feel like there's so much to the journey. I feel like there's so much to my story, but uh, after that, I went to college. Uh, I did the summer camp and, and my parents couldn't move at the time. I only had one more year of high school. So I was like, you know what? I'll finish high school. I'll finish with my friends here and then I'll move to college. So I went to Cal State LA, CSU LA. Where are you guys from? From New York? From what part of town are you in? Yeah, so we're from New York, but right now we're based in Norfolk, Virginia. Oh, no. oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I have a lot of friends from there. That's awesome. Okay. Uh, no wonder I liked you guys. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> so um, I went to LA. I studied. I went to Cal State LA. I did theater, and then I changed. I was like, you know what? I know what acting is all about. I want to learn how to produce. And so I started producing and I started learning everything about the filmmaking process and going to auditions and going to auditions and getting rejected a million times and going again and finally getting here and there, getting booked and, and getting jobs. And eventually, seven years later, I got sneakerheads, which is the reason of this podcast now. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. So um, you mentioned something where I kind of wanted to talk about. So. You said that you wanted to be an actor um, ever since you were a kid. So my parents, uh, my parents are from Haiti, um, even mm. Nigerian. So um, one thing we're interested in is that a lot of times, I guess, like growing up in either in the Caribbean or minority households, it's like doctor, like you should be like a doctor, lawyer, you know, nurse, right? engineer, engineer, right? Like it's usually like those are the jobs that like you know uh, parents tell their kids they should be, and usually the arts, like oh, I'm being an artist or like a musician, is not usually as uh like promoted so i guess like uh -huh. in your case um how was that was that something that was like promoted or was that something you kind of have to fight for um you know ever since uh, i wanted to be an actress my mom was extremely supported mm -hmm. supportive she she really my family was very extremely supportive um my mom right away put me in acting classes and she was always there finding a class or something or taking me to castings taking me to uh, to class every Saturday. So I did get that support. Um, I don't think, you know, I do think that they deep down really believed in me becoming an actress, but I think, and, and these are conversations that I still have till this day, where I think my dad really started to believe in me or, or see that this could potentially be a career probably like two or three years ago. Mm. So he always supported me. He always was like, you know what? Yes, go to Casa de LA. He, he told me, go to, to LA, but as long as you, you're going to go to LA, but you have to go to school. Because it's, it's still that, that, that feeling of a dad, of like that protectiveness of wanting you to be safe and to go to school and have like a plan B that could potentially be the plan A. Yeah. You know, you, you were mentioning my dad, was one of those who was like, well, you're going to be a lawyer. Are you going to be a lawyer? You're going to study a doctor. What are you, you know, those are the jobs that we want in this family in a way, but he was never too, um, he was not a strict person. He, he really, um, are you okay? Are you still there? Yeah, we're still there. Mom. Yanked out the no worries. <laughs> <laughs> so he wasn't, he wasn't a strict person and I'm, I'm so grateful for that. And, and so they allowed me to dream and, and even though a lot of people, you know, a lot of people in the family, I think, were very scared and, and still, you know, they were very supportive, but I'm trying to say like they were supportive, but they were still like, OK, but you're still going to go to college. Right. And you're going to finish college. Right. And you're going to do something that. Right. Like, you know, that yeah, yeah. scare that that feeling of like, OK, so um, I went to college and I still did auditions and I did everything. And I think. Bottom line, what I'm trying to say is sometimes you have to teach your parents. Mm. Sometimes you have to dream big. Yeah. And eventually everyone else will jump on the boat. Yeah. But at first, everyone is going to teach you what they think is right. Yeah. And people are always going to advise you based on what they think and based on their reality. Because the situation, the reality is that if you don't live in Hollywood, if you don't live in New York, most likely you don't think that anything on TV and film is possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like dreams, like me being a musician and an artist and, and, and a, 
Caribbean island where you don't make a living out of it, it's scary. Yeah. It's really scary. So a lot of people would always tell me, people from the family, extended families or friends, they would be like, oh, you're going you're gonna to starve to death. Like you're not to be super dramatic, yeah. but you're, you're not going to make a living out of, out of this. And so it's a matter of just, I just had to keep going and, and use that as my fuel to be like, you know what, one day you're going to be saying, oh, I always believed in you, Yeah. which is the case. <laughs> Definitely. which think, is the case now yeah um I, I was gonna say something similar i think parents um I'm, I'm gonna say you know like caribbean parents but you know what i mean like caribbean africans I, same, yeah. yeah like I, I feel like a lot of them um especially like i guess like immigrants to, to the u.s a lot of them had that like education and like those jobs were like their safety net like that was the go-to either like when they came like for example when my parents came like their main thing was ed- like go to school get a job you know, so like that's what they that's what and like it worked for them, which is fine. And um, but I guess like, you know, for our generation, so to speak, especially like with technology, social media, like the options are a little bit more broad. Yeah. There's definitely more yes. options. There's yeah. more, you know, things that you could do. For example, doing this podcast, like my in my parents' time, just setting up a laptop, having a camera and do like this wasn't even possible, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But like for us, it's 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 something that's possible, and that it's something that it could be, you know it was a, it was a dream of ours. It became a reality, and like you know who knows where it can become. Same thing, you know, you know, in in, in your case, you just have to go for it, and you know sooner or later, once they see you successful, they'll be like, oh okay, yeah, like now 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 we got you. Like, yeah, now. and you have to keep going. You have to keep going until you make it. Yeah. Like don't give up halfway there. I mean, you know. Like you said, teaching your parents is like that's such a. It's, I teach my parents, you know, like all the time, especially like my mom, like we always got to let her know like, all right, hey, you know, you grew up like 20 plus years ago, like things aren't the same anymore. Things have like changed. It's it's not like that anymore. We can do more things. There's more options. And, you know, and, 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 and it's so crazy because right now we're the young people but eventually we're not gonna be be and you know and it's all a cyclical thing it's all you know it's a cycle cycle of life at the end of the day um but it's it's funny i have a little brother he's seven years old and i still sometimes i feel a little bit disconnected to even that generation of of 10 14 years after me which is like it's all, well, it's YouTube, which is, yeah, it's YouTube. But then, you know, I'm sure that there's so many other things. Like we didn't have YouTube when we were seven years old, no. Yeah, yeah. you know? So yeah. all these kids have access now to potentially becoming millionaires at the age of seven. Yeah. I want to be, I want to do that. I'm going to dress up like Santa Claus and do the same. Like, I don't know. Like, I'm going to do something like that. I have to, I don't know. It's crazy. It's crazy. I want to be, I want to, I was to ask, I was like, we should really target kids. Like kids are the biggest market. Okay. That's that's 100%. Um, Yeah. So I would, I would ask kind of after all that, what would you say is your biggest piece of advice to um, anyone, you know, who, who, who wants to pursue acting, especially in this age of social media, where I think options are a little bit more open, where, you know, you have people um, who like came up off a of vine, you know, yeah. instead of the right. go, you know, some people go to traditional, right? Where you like acting school, maybe, you know, start commercial. Right. Something. But then you also have a whole segment of people where you find Instagram, TikTok, like. Right, those, right. Like, people, I people, think, like, yeah. I think regardless, you have to either you were born talented. There's a lot of people like that that have very amazing instincts. But I definitely think that is really important for people to still go to school. No, not, not to school, not like the normal school. Like go to acting class. Definitely yeah. learn, you know, learn the techniques. Learn to be genuine to, um, you know, for me, I'm not a bit, I've been going to acting classes since I was eight, eight years old. And I'm sure that a lot of things that I've learned have been, they're here, you know, I don't think too much about them. They're just like now in my body at this point. But I've been doing it since I was eight years old. So, um, you know, there's a lot of things that you were born with. And I do believe that people sometimes are just born with certain talents, but other people have to polish them. And then and then it also is like discipline. Yeah. Um, so going back to your question, which is what I would 
advice people that want to be actors. Um, I would definitely say uh, study, have a good background of like on, on, you know, acting classes, learn, learn the craft. Um, I hate this so crazy because now we're in pandemic time. So I feel like it's so <laughs> different to give, to give this advice right now. Um, uh, take cl classes through Zoom. It's, a, it's another option. Get an actor's access. Get yourself on these platforms, which is like, it's a database. Actors access backstage, uh, LA Casting or Casting Frontier, all these different websites that are for actors to get jobs. Now, everything is, I think my biggest advice is for people to understand that everything takes time and it's all about the levels and the steps. You're not going to go from nothing to being a celebrity. Some people do, and those are very lucky ones, but no, it takes time. It's a process. There's a lot of rejection. So I think one of the biggest advice that I, and it's kind of um, unorthodox to even say this you have to really work on your mind. You really have to be aligned with yourself. You have to, you have to be balanced and have a good, um, be optimistic because it's a difficult road, but it's really gratifying once you do it. And if you really love it, go for it, yeah. go for it and fight for it. And, and you're going to love it no matter how difficult it gets you're going to love it. You're going to love the process because as hard as it is, it's also very freaking gratifying. And so, yeah, go to school if you can, go to acting classes if you can, join Zoom classes, do workshops, um, get yourself on these data, uh, databases, uh, do a reel. So another thing, create your content. Now you can do it from your phone. Yeah. So create your content, put yourself out there, do monologues, do scenes, um, put it out. Uh, if you can, if you can write, or if you can have, if you have friends that can, are, that are writers or cinematographers or have any interest in the arts, create a group of people, do a network event, do uh, uh, create a team of people that believe in you and that have the same mentality of let's create, let's be, Let's do this together. And I think um, I think that's something that I did love about LA. And someone was asking me today, uh, yesterday, she, they were asking me, uh, did you love LA? Or what about LA did you like? And I was like, you know what? What I loved about LA is that all the dreamers go there. Mm, yep. And so, and, not, and now it's shifting. Don't get me wrong. Now the dreamers are everywhere. And that's something that I'm seeing because of Instagram and the internet. We are, we are really seeing a lot of people that are dreaming. Like you guys, you know, we are dreamers. Yeah. We are doing it. And so, so I think that's something that has definitely shifted in the last decade because of social media. But, but yeah, LA was a place where um, I'm not there right now, but whenever I was there, everyone had a goal of creating, of being part of something, of putting themselves out there. And just, so what I'm saying is it doesn't have to be in LA, but in your town, find those people that are dreamers. Yeah. Find those people that you can create some sort of support group because it's, it is a tough thing to create too. But if you have a support group, and, and you have a team that is continually telling you, you can do it. And yes, let's do it. You fail. Okay, get up. I think that's the biggest thing. Having a good, a good mindset. For that's sure. what keeps you going. I would definitely agree. Do you, do you have anything? No, I mean, she really yeah. said it. Like, she yeah. just preach it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. So um, I was going to say, like, definitely for the podcast, um, I, I, we've seen that live in action. Like, we've seen, like, how many people, um, like, we... I, I moved down here a year ago um, mm. and coming down here, like I didn't know that that many people, you know, and like I started the podcast here, but, you know, having that great support group, like my old roommate, you know, he was, um, it was the first episode was me and my old roommate and, and Edom. And then we just grew from there from like, you know, just networking, meeting people and like everyone along the way has just been supportive, you know, for example, for example, like yourself, just hopping on a podcast, like that's, that's a, to us, that's our support group. Yeah. Every one of our guests is our support group. Everyone who's, um, you know, decide to be on an episode, whether it's been on IG, whether it's been on Zoom, whether, you know, mm -hmm. be, 
you know, reached out and gave and given us other people to network with, you know, like shout out Carl Hill. He's always like, yo, whenever I meet somebody, like I got to tell them about everybody's podcast. Like, you know, that support group has helped us. So we've seen that for sure live in action. Um, yeah. I want to, yeah. I want to ask um, one more, another thing. Um, you, you talk about kind of like being aligned with yourself, kind of like being mentally uh, prepared. We talk about failure a lot and how to cope with mm. failure. Um, and you mentioned about rejection. I know within the acting world, like, you know, going to a lot of auditions and you said like um, being, um, having to deal with rejection. So how, I guess, how do you, you know, deal with rejection? How have you dealt that with rejection? Yeah. I guess like, you know, some advice you can give. Um, I guess like you can talk either in general or more specific in terms yeah. of- Yeah, you know what? Um, it's, it's definitely been a process of dealing with it. At first it was really difficult and I think- once I started, um, I think becoming more spiritual, I've always been very spiritual, spiritual, but I think maturing and, and understanding life in a different perspective definitely helped me a lot. Mm. Um, one thing that I always talk about in, in my, on Instagram and, and about me, you know, every time that I talk about, about myself, I always talk about the journey yeah. and I've always used my name as the journey, follow the journey. And I always say that. But it's because it is about the journey and it's not about success. Success is not that fun. You know, success is cool on paper. Success is, is, wow, finally. But it's about everything that comes, everything that it's, it's the process. Success is fun because of the failures, Mm -hmm. you know, success when, when success is just given like that without failing, it, it's not as as enjoyable yeah and and so i think failing is as much of 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 success and as important as success and for me um you know i i just went to an audition the other day and it was awful i did such a bad job and i was like oh my god oh my god because it was dancing and i'm I'm not i haven't learned a choreography in so long i haven't really been in a dance class like that in so long so I went, I was like, you know what? I might, I might uh, be a fool. I, I might do like something stupid, but you know what? I'm just going to go with my positive attitude and I'm going to enjoy this. And this could be, this could be a success or it could be a really funny story to tell. <laughs> and, so, and so in a way, I've always seen my failures as like, well, that happened. Let's keep going. And so um, I think that that's fun. That's part of the process you have to, it's just about how you look. Life is all about perspective. And, and you, can, you can decide to be like, oh, I failed again. Oh, life is bad. You know, you can have that mentality. But what is the fun on that? You know, just change yeah. it. You know, just make a decision and be like, you know what? I'm going to have fun no matter what, no matter how many times I fail. Um, and, and just knowing that, that one day that, that that you're learning with that, that you're learning every time you fail, you're learning. Mm-hmm. You learn way more than when you succeed. Mm-hmm. And and yeah, just to embrace failure. I think definitely that would be my my advice. I, I've dealt with, yeah, with humor. I don't take myself too seriously. And I think that's that's the the best advice I can give people is don't take yourself too seriously. You're you have to give yourself importance enough to keep going and to definitely be your your biggest fan, but not give yourself importance at all so that you keep going yeah. and that you um, realize that life is a gift and that you have to enjoy every day. And, 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 you know, it's about living. I think at the end of the day, it's about living. It's about um, creating the life that you want. It's about experiencing. It's about enjoying the process. And hopefully one day when you're old, you look back and you're like, oh, at least I did it. You know, I failed, but I went for it. Yeah, definitely. You know, it's better. It's better to reminisce than to regret. Yeah. You know? Never, we never want to go to the, the grave with the what if or anything. Yeah. No. And you know what? I'm a little bit morbid in that way. Cause I do think about that. I'm like, what am I going to be thinking when I'm in my deathbed? You know, like, I want to be like, you know what? I did crazy things. Like I, you know, I dared to dream and yeah. And I was a fool and I did it or whatever. But, but at the end of the day, like I want to be the type of person to be courageous. And I think you have to be courageous to be okay with failure, you know? 
Yeah. And and at the end of the day, just be courageous. There's nothing to lose. Nothing. At the end of the day, we all die. You know, <laughs> so <laughs> nothing is that it. important. <laughs> sure, might as well go for it. All right. So on yeah. that note, do you have anything to conclude? All right. So uh, <laughs> I'm over here talking so much, guys. Okay, Come no, on, like <laughs> it's fine. I'm enjoying the conversation for sure. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so I guess on that note, we can go to the second segment. Quote of the day. Quote of the day. Um, so Ooh. while you know pulling that up, um, happy belated birthday. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. I'm you still also, with that energy. <laughs> for sure. You're also an October baby. My birthday was earlier this month. So, you know, I got an October baby. It's just the superior month. Yes, <laughs> October <devil>. month. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Nah, October. October We're good September. people. <laughs> That's a superior month. And I saw you yeah. went, you went skydiving too? I did. Where was that? Was that in Puerto Rico? In Puerto Rico. How I did. That? You know, I've always been so scared of skydiving. I've always been terrified of heights. And and every time my my brother, because my brother was the one that told me to go it, to go with him. And he was um, every time he would mention it, I would my legs would shake. <laughs> I would be like, no, we're not going. Like I would literally just shake and like, like feel like I was losing breath. Um, but then when I did it, it was honestly the most amazing thing. Yeah. Like I, I encourage everyone to do it because you feel, you feel invincible. You feel like what? It's like gratitude. You know, it's like, wow, this world is beautiful. Yeah. Was that you your know? Going? Yeah. 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 Have you gone? Have you both no, so done I, it? I do want to go. I do want to go. One of my boys, he invited me back, like, I think it was like Labor Day was on his birthday. So he went. And I was like, I was so for it until like two weeks before. And I was like, uh, I don't know. Ooh, Carl. Oh. Yeah. Hey, one, of, one of our former guests, uh, he, he went skydiving for his birthday. But um, next time, I, next time I have to do it. Like, it's that one thing I have to conquer. You know? It's that you one. should do it. No, do it. And then, and even if it's, it's, this was a metaphor for me, um, a metaphor to your dreams, you know? It is a metaphor. Like, um, you know, I did bungee jumping too earlier, um, like three years ago. And bungee jumping was way more scary than skydiving for sure. I didn't understand why. I, yeah. Yeah, because I went, I was going up. I was going up in the elevator or whatever that was. And, you know, I was like, okay, okay. And then I started freaking out because I was seeing everyone so tiny. And I was like, like looking at the man, like, and he's like, you know, he's like chilling, like, and I've done this like a million times, like, and I was like, and he's like, well, you know, when we get to the top, I'm going to count till three. I'm going to count till three. And when I say three, you jump. And I'm like, oh, oh, I'm just, oh, so basically I'm committing suicide. Oh, okay, <laughs> cool. And so, cause I thought he was going to push me or something, you know, like I thought, yeah. and so, but then he told me, he said, fear is all in your mind and I was like it's like wow it's all in your mind Mm -hmm. okay and I was like you know what fear is not existent fear is as big (laughs) as you allow it to be you know (laughs) and so and then I jumped and when I jumped I was like this adrenaline and like the happiest I've ever been the happiest I've ever been and so um going back to the dreams sometimes I think dreams and things that scare you they're scary because of the anticipation of it Mm. and because you're like you're like should I do it should I do it should I do it and you're like but you have to you have to just jump you have to just do it and then eventually it's like oh oh this is cool I'm gonna do it again for sure, for sure. I could go, go now. I feel like Will Smith talking about this. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. No, I, I, was literally, I was literally like, I used, to, I used to lifeguard. So like, I would literally tell people the same thing before they go off the diving board. Like, it, you, it's always scary, like when you're walking on the board, but like once you jump, everyone says the same thing. Like, it's not that deep. No pun intended. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, What's the quote of the day? I feel like you're, you're like ready to say this. <laughs> well, I feel like it relates to like it always has a way of relating to like the conversation yeah um so the quote is uh the underlying the underlying cause of the most unfulfilled lives is that we're simply too close to ourselves to see clearly enough to get out of our own way wow yeah it's a mouthful yeah yeah but i'm saying again yeah 
The underlying cause of the most unfulfilled lives is that we're simply too close to ourselves to see clearly enough to get out of our own way. Mm. All right. Who said that, though? Wow. All right. So he's an author, um, born in Chicago, and he's a very, also very, very famous pickup artist. Ooh. Wait, do we have to guess the author? Oh, well, yeah, we never, we keep forgetting. Oh, oh, yeah, we keep forgetting. Yeah, um, yeah we have to oh. guess. Yeah, yeah, we have to yeah, guess. Oh, oh, okay, wait, wait. Sorry, sorry. So, wait, wait. That's the, I was like, I thought we were going to, like, dissect the quote. <laughs> we'll do, we'll do that after, but first we kind of have to guess. <laughs> okay, wait. So, can you say it again? Can you say, yeah. you said, wait, you said he is a what? Okay, so he's a, uh, he was, He's a, he's a famous author and a former famous pickup artist, and he's born in Chicago. Pickup artist? Is that that dude who wrote that book? <laughs> I mean, the okay. book he wrote was called The Game. He wrote a book called The Game? Yeah. Oh, shit. You, I, I, I suck book. at this game. I don't, I'm not good with names. Yeah, and not the one uh, on Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I know of the guy, but I don't know his name. I We're gonna lose. I'm sorry, but I'm like, <laughs> like oh, that's crazy. All yeah. right. Um, his name is Neil Strauss. Neil Strauss. Neil Strauss. Okay. Neil Strauss. Neil Strauss. Well, that was a beautiful quote. Gotcha. Yeah, I mean I feel like that's you go. Oh no, I was gonna say, um, I, I think of I think of like the saying that like, you know, you kind of get in your own way sometimes, you know, or like sometimes the biggest enemy is yourself, you know, kind of like sometimes, you know, you're you you maybe tell yourself you can't do anything or maybe like kind of like you said it's that hesitation like sometimes you hesitate and you kind of get in your own way of fulfilling your dreams yeah if, i mean if you're if you're too busy you know quitting or filling yourself up if you know yourself so much and you know you're you're filling yourself up with so much doubt about moving on to the next audition and, and keeping it pushing forward you're never gonna you know um get anywhere and what we used to say was um i mean it still applies two curves makes a circle so you're back at square one <laughs> so it's like, wow all right so if you get curved twice you just started from the beginning yep <laughs> wow so. wow okay well crap um i was think i went deep on that i was just thinking about um Ooh, wait, now I'm like, I, you guys, I was like so deep on that. You were like <laughs> analyzing this. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I feel like I was thinking, that's what I was thinking. I was looking at you, I was like thinking about this. I was like, um, sometimes you don't see your own magic, mm. you know? Cause you're so, you're yourself. You see yourself every time on the mirror, you know? Yeah. So you don't see your light. And, and I do think that what it, what it's saying too, it's like, you you are bright and you shine by your like by your own light you have your this unique light and this magic that is you um so just get out of your yeah get out of it get out of your mind so sure. many people are always like so caught up in their own thoughts sure. but um yeah realizing that to to appreciate your own magic sure. i guess at the end of the day you know i agree i agree <laughs> Any last points? No, you just gotta get out of your own way. Yeah, That's it, literally. Way, get sure. out of your own way. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Could you say a quote one last time to end it off? All right. So yeah, I'll... please. That was deep. I'm like, I need to like, <laughs> please send that to me later. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the underlying cause of the most unfulfilled lives is that we're simply too close to ourselves to see clearly enough to get out of our own way. By Neil Strauss. Neil Strauss. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. I need to read his book now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, it's a very interesting book, but yeah, you can check it out. Again. You don't like it? Did you no, read it? No, no, yeah. no, 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 no. I mean, hey, teach their own. Everybody like yeah. has their own perspective. Yeah. This is funny. Yeah, it's, it's but funny. I want you to check it out. So I'm not gonna say anything about it. Yeah, it's a very okay, interesting okay. book. <laughs> okay. <laughs> On that note, we'll go to um, our last segment. Um, mm. So I want to kind of have a conversation about culture, um, kind of like yes. history as. A young Hispanic woman in Hollywood, right? So, um, wait, what? What did you say? Sorry, I couldn't young hear you. Young Hispanic woman in Hollywood. The youngest? No, as a <laughs> young Hispanic woman. Oh, sorry. <laughs> My bad. I couldn't hear you. Okay. Yeah. So, I want to talk about, like, I guess, um, 
how, how what your culture means to you, right? So I guess like a quick background. Um, outside of the podcast, Edom and I we also have a clothing line called Kilti, um, and Kilti that literally translates to culture in Haitian Creole. Um, mm. So it's, it's our clothing line that we manage, and literally the whole you know basis the story behind the, the line is people's cultures, embracing people's cultures, creating art and designs that represent people's cultures, right? Um, and the ones that are closest to us slash closest. Yeah, the ones that are closest to us, we're mainly like Latino, um, Caribbean, and African cultures. So yeah. That's a little background. Our audience, you guys heard this in my mm-hmm. um, But so I want to ask you, um, I know you say you're Puerto Rican. Um, what, 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 I guess, how has your, or what does, what does your culture mean to you? What do you love about it? And kind of like, how has that, you know, helped you along, you know? Absolutely. You know, I think it's crazy because, you know, my culture, has been everything for me. It's a big part of who I am. Like my personality is my culture, you know, like, and, and, um, it comes from, you know, it goes back to a lot of time ago, you know, like it's, it's Puerto Rican culture is, comes from three races, which is indigenous black or Africans and, um, and Spanish people. So having the mixture, which I think that this mixture is pretty uh, common in Caribbean islands. Yeah. Um, so I think that it's, 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 it really, it, it's, it's something that is really important for me. The music that we listen to, it's because of that. It's because of our mix. We are a mixed, we, we are a, a very, mixed race you know and and so everywhere i go i think it's i wouldn't be able to detach myself from my culture you know um it's you know when i when you were asking me you asked me something i was like well i might think of it in spanish because you know that's my culture i've been listening to reggaeton music my whole life you know i've been listening to spanish music my whole life it's what I connect to. Um, uh, Bomba y plena, you know, the music with with uh, with the, I don't even know how to say it in English. But, you know, everything that I am is thanks to my culture and, and my values and the way that I am very grateful for life. You know, people come to the island sometimes and I think that they do fall in love with the lifestyle and how happy we are as people bottom line like I think people are very happy very not complacent but very grateful every day yeah and I think that's something that I do appreciate about about my culture particularly is that we are very grateful and very and and live every day and are and are very happy with the simple things Mm -hmm. you know so um, I don't know. I don't know if I'm answering your question. I feel like oh, I'm on the- uh, for sure. You definitely are. I was gonna say like I can. I can totally agree. Like I had the chance to go to Haiti back in 2015. Um, that was my first time going, and just like seeing the people, seeing the culture, seeing everything in person, it hits different. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, um, you know, a lot of people they don't. They're not as fortunate. They don't have as much as we do. But you can see they just have more joy. You know, and it's like, you know, you. Think about yeah, like more money, more problems. Yeah, you, you know never knew what it was like, like to have that, you know. So now you can't, you know. Yeah, you know. More like, money, more problems. Yeah. Mm. Right, so, um, try to be small, but yeah, it, it, it's like, true, and it's true, and sometimes like you know, coming coming to the United States, it was a big, big clash for me. Not, it was really interesting because then it was kind of like. I'm Latina, right? In the eyes of Americans, I'm Latina. But then under Latina, I'm like, wait, but I'm also Puerto Rican. And then it was like, oh, wait, but even in Puerto Rico, like, what is Puerto Rican? Because something that I didn't understand in the, in the Amer- like, as I'm for, like, of America is like, wait, why do people are like, they're Americans, but then it's like the hyphenate of like, well, I'm, I'm Hispanic American. I am yeah. Asian American. I'm African American. Yeah. I, I always felt, I was like, that's really weird. Yeah, I didn't understand why there was this need of like hyphen it. Yeah, 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 you know. A lot of and countries don't do that. A lot of no, if you're black and German, you're just German. <laughs> you're German, <laughs> you're like right? German. Yeah, right. Like, so, yeah. so that's something that we have to change in America <laughs> because 
we have to because that was that's that's when I'm like, oh, no wonder we have race problems. Like it starts with the way that we, you know, even mention things. We the way that we call things, yeah. and so um, so then having to find my identity and having to fit the box of Latina. It's like okay, but but wait, I'm black too, mm. and I'm I'm Spanish too, and I'm indigenous too. Yeah, and and in here, like we are not, we're Puerto Ricans, and we look like everything mm -hmm. in the world. Like we come in all colors, all forms, all shapes, and we always are so like we're Puerto Rican. What's up? And so that that unity of like I'm Puerto Rican. What's up? No matter like how you look, we're Puerto Rican, and we're gonna go down. Like you know, we're gonna. So I think um, I think that was also something that going to the United States, I realized how much I loved my culture because it never made me feel like, yeah, like I was, like there was this disconnect. Like we always felt a un, uh, yeah, united. Yeah. I, and I just hope that that happens and it's happening hopefully to the United States too. It's too big, it's just too big. <laughs> it's too big of a place. <laughs> But community and, and culture is it's very important for sure. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, so I guess to, to stem off of that, um, how would you I don't know if you want to say categorize your journey or like how has the journey been um journey, right? Like how has that been um as a young Hispanic woman in Hollywood? Um, I guess like compared to I guess the rest of the industry, I guess how has that do you think that that's caused or have you faced either problems because of that or do you think or has it been maybe opportunities because hey you could say you're bilingual you know what i'm saying so maybe that right the world. so I absolutely guess, how has that been um absolutely like, that's true that you say that i mean it's going back to perspective at the end of the day mm -hmm. it's really all about perspective i mean i feel that my journey has been very tumultuous at times and very exciting and very nerve wracking and very um, fun. So I, I wouldn't be able to tell you, oh, this is what is my journey. I think my journey has been a lot about, it, it's been about the ups and the downs and, and the uncertainty and being present and just living one day at a time. Um, but I do feel very blessed because as a young, you know, I've been very blessed as a young Latina actress. I've gotten a lot of opportunities. I've, I've done, I've, I've been part of projects that I'm proud of that, that in a way portray me and Latina women as badass women, as, as very intelligent, very smart, very, um, uh, as dreamers, as, uh, as gold diggers, you know, you know, as, as people that really have gold driven, you know, we, we really care about, about dreaming big and accomplishing our dreams. And so I've been very lucky that way. Um, yeah, I feel like it's really difficult to, to pinpoint it and to say, oh, this is what my journey is. And yeah, I, I yeah. still feel, I still feel like I'm just starting, Yeah, you so know, I have a, I guess a new question coming from that. Do you, now that you're, you, you, just started um do you have like a angle in the sense of like an ideal character you'd love to play or something you want to be remembered for like you know uh Chadwick Boseman you know sadly RIP uh, he was remembered as yeah. Black Panther so yeah and, wow you know. that's crazy RIP for sure um he's a very wow he's like a big inspiration because he was such a humble man um and so talented. And I hope that everyone in the world just tries to be more like him. Um, I would, uh, you know, I, I really don't know. I would like, cause I, I, I hope that I get to do more, you know? And I hope that I get to do roles that are very fulfilling and very um, challenging. And I hope that I'm still not there yet. But if I were to die today, for example, um, you, you, what was your question? Oh, what like role you, you think? Ultimately, like what role do you right. want? Right. Like, um, I would love to, I would love to be a superhero like him. 
Yeah. That would be awesome. Like I would love to be a Latino superhero. I would love that. <laughs> I've been Marvel. saying it. <laughs> Let's call Marvel. They've been playing. <laughs> let's do it, let's do it. No, I really want to be a, a Latino superhero. I that's my dream. Even with Little America, which I did, it felt like I was a, super, a little superhero in that in that because I was this this uh, champion on on squash, and I was this like big person, like you know. So I I've had. Everything that I've done so far, I've I felt like a big superhero in, in my own way. But I would love to be a superhero. I would love to to play Alexandria Ocasio Cortez one day. Mm. Like I would love to be something like that, like a president or like a congresswoman yeah, yeah, yeah. that changed lives. You know, like okay. something like that. That's very like wow. With a biopic, let's get you to the yeah. Box. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I would love that. I would love you know, that. You got to get her on the podcast. Now that you said that, that's a goal. You got to get her on the podcast one day. One of these days. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. So that, that kind I'm of, sure she um, would love it. Yeah, I hope. Definitely. I hope so. Um, that kind of goes to like a follow-up question. One thing we love to ask our guests is what is their conceded goal? Like if you could achieve one goal for yourself, um, what would it be? Like if you could attain one thing or if you could do one thing, what would it be? Outside of acting too. Yeah, so it could, be, of acting. it could be out of act, outside of acting. So it could be within and without. So if you have just one goal you could accomplish, what would it be? Ah, uh, ooh, that's so hard. Um, right now, right now, my goal would be to be. Wow, this is gonna be like so big to say, but like a international like musician like right now I would love to be because it's a new dream and it's something that scares me so I'm like yeah let's go for it <laughs> uh, yeah. I would like to be a singer I would like to be a reggaeton artist like something like like pop I would like it's to do pop. it's in the air it's so it's gonna happen yeah. yeah yeah I've been I've been doing it um I've been working on it but it's something that's very new and it's it's exciting and that's why I'm doing it. I'm like, you know what? I don't know where this could go, so let's do it. <laughs> well, that's, that's, it. that's important. Yeah. Well, that's it, for sure. Um, so yeah. What about you guys? Ooh, damn, that's a good question. I wasn't prepared for that. Dang. Okay. Um, if I could achieve one thing with this podcast, um, if, if it's going to be related to the podcast, like I, I want our own show. Like I want, a, like I want like a stu- in, in a in a real studio, kind of like like a Breakfast Club type vibe. Right? Yes. Like I want, I want it in a studio where like all the equipment and the guests would come in, and we could just have like a nice vibe conversation where we could, um, you know, learn and kind of like be ratchet at the same time. You know. Yeah. <laughs> You know, like we could, we could just be ourselves and, but you know, learn and educate at the same time. So. And you're going to do it. Thank you. Sure. Just declare sure. things. That's, that's, if I could say an advice, and this is an advice that my dad has always told me declare things, mm-hmm. declare it, yeah. declare it. And it's almost like magic. I'm telling you, when you declare things, when you say, I'm going to, instead of one, I hope, yeah. or maybe, or this, when you say, I'm going to do this, it's almost like you're telling the universe, yes, it's happening. That's a fact. Got to manifest, got to put it out in the air, got to say it, all that. Yeah, I just kind of do it with that power. And I guess for a guilty, I really want A to be, I mean, A to be in shop, but more I want to see like some famous people like wearing it, like, you know, Travis Scott. Um, yes. Great. Um, just even anybody who like dances or does funny skits, I just want to see him like in you know, yes. like, oh, like, oh, yes. Send me. Do you have a link for it right now? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. We yes, can, definitely can, send yeah, it to me. For sure, for sure. We'll send that over. Well, well let's see if we can get that happening. Like, let's for do sure. it. Sure, <laughs> sure, sure. It's my dream from yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We'll get we'll get AOC so we can contact for that bio <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Um, I know you want to ask about how to get the role. Yeah, so I mean, I I feel like she covered it earlier, but how exactly did you land? Nori. Yeah, Nori. 
Yeah. Um, I landed, and this has been the joke because I got this part a day before I had to be on set. Oh, wow. And it was a re-release. They basically had re-released the role. They hadn't found, they, they hadn't found the person. And I had auditioned for the role about seven months prior to it. And they never saw the tape. Or they saw it and it was just so bad that they didn't even remember about it. Uh-huh. Um, and, um, and so it was February and I was doing a short and it was Friday. And my manager tells me, oh, you have an audition due on Monday, get it done. And I was like, well, I'm working, you know, I'm working Saturday, Sunday. And I'm like, okay, well, okay, I'll, I'll make it happen. So I, ironically, that day, it was Sunday and they had done this hairdo and this makeup and these nails for the, for the short that I was doing. And I had that done. So I couldn't really take the the nails off. I couldn't do it. So I used that for that role, which I never had envisioned that Nori was going to be like that. I thought Nori was going to be a little bit more like Michelle Rodriguez in the sense of like no makeup, more like maybe more simple. But no, because of that short, I had this like long nails and the attitude and this and that. And I send the safe, the self tape. I audition for it. I send it in. I keep going with my life. It was Sunday. Monday, I get the call. You got the part. You booked it. And I was like, oh, okay. Okay. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I was okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> and then, um, and then I had to be, I think it was like Tuesday, I had to be on set to get dressed up. Um, and then on Wednesday, yeah, and then that was it. And then then it was like one day I had to, it was the next day I had to be getting dressed up and reading all the six episodes. And then the day after I was on set. And so it was really an experience. I almost felt like I was like, oh my God, imp- imposter syndrome. I was like, is this really mine? Like. <laughs> Did they make a mistake? Like, are you sure you want to give me this role? <laughs> and, uh, and then I did it. And then I just, it was one of the best experiences. You know, it was a, a, it was a lot of growth because we shot it in five, in five episodes in one month. So, wow. so it was a very challenging process, but it was a lot of growth and it felt, it made me feel prepared for everything. Wow. Yeah, that's a, that's a lot. That's, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's a lot. Um, yeah, we, we shot about <laughs> crazy. Crazy. That's what she said. Yeah, yeah. Now that, that's that experience. But uh, I guess like um two things I guess I'm interested. I know like your character was like obviously a sneakerhead, right? I'm like so she I guess like boss. She yeah, was a she boss. Was, she was really, FaceTime everybody let them know what's up. Like, what's going on? <laughs> So, um, is that something that like you're into in real life or is that something just for the show like, I, guess I you know I wasn't no okay. I I my roommate actually loved sneakers and so thank god for her because she gave me some sneakers for the audition um and I always thought they were really cute I was like wow like I love those like how do you get those yeah. but I didn't understand the how crazy it is to get cool sneakers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I did it even when I was doing it, I was like, this is totally fiction. Like this is an exaggeration. Yeah. And no, like sneakerheads have been telling me, no, 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 this is exactly how it goes. Yeah, no, nah, I was like, like <laughs> that's why I love the show because like they got it to the truth. I tried buying the, the J. Cole two he dropped. He dropped the first one, I couldn't get it. He dropped the second one. I I woke up an hour before I was ready. Immediately it hit 10 a.m. pulled out. <laughs> no I, I don't even know what to do like I, I I'm not plugged in bro like I don't know and I guess and I guess that's marketing wise like I'm I'm guessing like they just they strategically make very few of them right yeah yeah, yeah. so it's sort of the demand can go up you yeah, know resale value just shoots up the retail goes if I want a pair of my size like they sold retail for like I think 90 to 100 but I want a pair so, of my size, like 50 so this is the business advice that Nori's gonna give you right now. <laughs> you are going to, you're gonna make select like a few choices of your shirts, okay? So that they sell quick, okay? <laughs> and everything that you know, everything that you create, make a few of them, so so that the price goes up. 
Hey. You know, you know, learn from that. Learn from hey, that hey. sneakerhead. <laughs> <laughs> Select them. Out. Um, so uh, I guess how was it? Um, I know you, you there was like there was like King Bach, I think went up so like Paul Pierce is there. So I guess like those um personalities, like oh, we also want to know, was it really Paul Pierce? I'm sorry. Was it really Paul, Paul Pierce? Pierce? Yes. Was, okay, That's all right. Great. So I knew it was <laughs> Okay. Yes, the only one that wasn't real was Mark uh, Wahlberg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but his name is actually Mark Wahlberg, so the he guy, was really the, the actual actor. Or yes, his okay. name is actually Mark Wahlberg in real life. That's funny. That's funny. Hilarious. Got it. Got it. So yeah, that's how funny. was that? Was that like like were you nervous or anything filming with like uh, shooting with these? Um, I guess I never knew who was gonna come. Like I was like, we, we kind of knew, but sometimes it would change around. So I never, um, I, oh, I feel so bad that I don't remember his name right now, but the guy from Get Out. Uh, Lakeith Stanfield? Like, yeah. Was that, no. Character? no, no, but the guy that was, that he was, no. um, I, he's going to feel so bad. Um, <laughs> the, the, he was trying to get the shoes for $10,000. I'm drawing. Boy. Well, oh, I, I know he's talking. About. I know, I know he's talking. About. His friend, his friend, his friend. Yeah, I know he's talking. About. I, know he's talking about. Yeah. I completely forgot his name right now. <laughs> I'm gonna remember later. Um, but that he was probably the one that I got really like. Oh my god! Like I just watched Get Out, and you were amazing <laughs> on it. Like you're the cop from Get Out. Like you know, and like, <laughs> and so um, and then seeing Michael Rappaport was also like, ooh, like man, like you are a legend, and I'm watching you on netflix right now too so it was just kind of like i felt like a little kid like oh like yeah it was really cool it was really cool um nick young was there too right nick young too yeah yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's cool that's there were a lot of names that's why i'm like oh but yeah. um but it was really awesome and i just i really hope that we get to do a second season because yeah. i know that it's just gonna be even more people even more celebrities yeah. even more exciting yeah so we'll see. We'll see. We'll see what they come up with. Definitely, definitely. But yeah, I definitely enjoyed it. So yeah, for anyone listening, it. if you guys haven't tuned in, make sure you're going to go watch. You go watch Sneakerheads. It's on Netflix. Yo, six oh, episodes. Yeah. You can bang that out in a day. I honestly. did. <laughs> yes, you are. I watched it in two hours. And I was like, wait, what? It's done already? <laughs> you can really bang it out like that. So make sure you go, go tune in. Yes, um, yes, yes. Finally, on that note, mm -hmm. oh, yes ask you but do you have a song that describes your journey wow i was gonna say <laughs> my journey is i don't know why this is the first song that i came up with or thought of was estamos bien estamos bien hey, hey. Okay. <laughs> you know okay, we're, doing we're doing good we <laughs> doing good <laughs> I think that's that's like my my song through life. I'm like, we good. Come on, Viang. Everything is good. <laughs> Bad Bunny, right? Bad Bunny. Bad Bunny. <laughs> <laughs> got it, got it. Okay, so we're adding that to the playlist. So um, on that note, man, thank you so much for joining us on today's episode. Yeah. Um, okay. Really good conversation. I learned a lot. I hope you enjoyed it. And, uh, I really did. I really did. It's been a pleasure, guys. Mm -hmm. I hope that one day we get to meet. And I hope that all your dreams come true. You keep okay. dreaming. You keep, you keep going. Appreciate it. Thank you, thank you. Next time, <laughs> next time when LA and Puerto Rico, we'll let you off. We'll let you know. Yes, yes, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Please do, please do. Let's and do send it. me the link, please. For sure, I got you that email. Um, okay. So, any of our listeners, make sure you're tuning in on all platforms again. Make sure you're following us. Oh, and how can they follow you? What's the question? They can follow me on at Jernest Corchado. You're, you might have to write it down because, like, yeah. my name is complicated. <laughs> so, at Jernest Corchado on Instagram. And I think right now on Twitter, I'm as Jernest CO. And yeah, that's about it. So, that's how you can reach out. Make sure you tune in on all platforms, on all uh watch all our episodes coming out definitely um, definitely and hopefully i think i might start doing the youtube thing it's something that i've been 
flirting with the idea for a, for a long time. So if they want to follow me on there to really follow the journey um, or the journey, um, it's Journey Sports Shadow as well. All right, you guys heard me. So you like, subscribe, follow on YouTube. Yes. Um, so on that note, see you guys. Tune in next week. Bye.